Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be reading you the book Orca Chief. This is a traditional story from the northwest coast of British Columbia and it has some really beautiful illustrations done of animals that live in the Pacific Ocean and those illustrations are done by Roy Henry Vickers, a famous BC artist. Let's get started. Orca Chief. Kit Kala is a small village near Prince Rupert on the northwest coast of British Columbia. My people have lived here continuously for over 5,000 years, and this is one of our old stories handed down for generations. In the old days, four men set out for, from Kitkala to paddle to their food gathering place, known today as the Esteban Group. It was spring, the time to gather seaweed and fish for sockeye salmon. It was a long paddle, and when the men arrived, they wanted to drop their anchor and sleep. In those days, an anchor was a big, heavy rock with a hole carved through it and a cedar bark rope tied through the hole. The men were so sleepy, they just threw the anchor over the side. They didn't say a prayer. They didn't ask that the anchor find a safe place to land on the bottom of the ocean. Well, that anchor did not land quietly on the ocean floor. It landed on the roof of the underwater house belonging to the chief of all the orca. The anchor made such a loud bang that orca chief said to one of his helpers, a little ratfish, swim up and find out who is up there and why they dropped a rock on my house. So ratfish went up to the ocean surface and he saw the canoe. Curious, he swam around and around with his tail slapping the sides of the boat. The noise woke the sleeping men and one grumpy hunter reached over and grabbed Ratfish, pulled his fins off and threw him back in the water. Poor little Ratfish swam back down and told Orca Chief about the bad people on the surface. Orca Chief became very angry he sent two of his best warriors to the surface, telling them, bring those people down to my house. So the two orcas swam around and around and around and around, faster and faster and faster and faster, until they caused an enormous whirlpool that sucked the canoe right down, down, down the bottom of the sea and through the door of the big house belonging to Orca Chief. Then all was quiet. The canoe with the four surprised men in it sat on the floor of the big house. Orca Chief looked at the men and asked, why would you drop your anchor on my roof? You should act with more respect in this world. The men were scared of the fierce looking whale and they started crying. They begged the chief, please have pity on us. We were tired. Yes, we were disrespectful. We are sorry. We didn't know you had a house down here. We will learn to be more careful. We will learn. Orca chief was kind. So he asked two of his best hunters to take these men and show them the ocean. He said, Show them all of the food, even the little sea cucumbers that move slowly on the ocean floor. Tell them what is good to eat. Most importantly, he instructed the men, always give thanks to those things that are going to become your food. Then the orca hunters took the men on an adventure and showed them all the beautiful things as they traveled through the underwater world.
The whale showed the men when the tides stop coming in and start going out, everything slows down. This is the best time to catch halibut, ling cod, and red snapper. Then the orca took the men to an island with a shallow bay shaped like a saucer with a creek flowing into it and they saw how the many huge beautiful crabs followed the tide. The men took their paddles and held them out to the crabs. The crabs bit the paddles and the men lifted them into their canoe and gave thanks. The orca then brought the men to the place where the Skeena River meets the Pacific Ocean and showed them where the Ulachan came in the spring. The orca explained, you can also call these candlefish because when they are caught and dried, you can light them on fire. They are so rich with oil. The oil would become an important part of the diet of the people and so valuable that they would trade it all over the world. Beyond, the men could see a pod of humpbacks working as a team, surrounding a school of herring. The whales swam in a circle in blue bubbles, keeping the thousands of fish together. As they swam around and around, the circle got smaller and the herring were forced closer together into a shiny silver ball. When the wise female of the group decided it was time, she let out a loud call which blew bubbles underneath the herring, forcing them to the surface. It was as if she was saying, okay, come and get it. She was the oldest mother and it was her job to make sure her family had enough to eat. At her call, the whales swam under and scooped up the herring in their open mouths. As the men watched this family, they remembered their own mothers calling them for dinner, and they smiled as they imagined the hugs they would share once they returned to the village. After many more lessons, the Kit Katla men were taken back to the surface. Much time had passed and it was now the middle of summer. The men sang songs and paddled with a new respect for all that lived below the surface. As they traveled through a wide channel between two islands, they heard loud squeals and saw their friends coming to say goodbye. Ten orca clans came to celebrate, playing and jumping out of the water, bringing their children to show them the majesty of the world above. In the middle of this joyful gathering, the men remembered that they had promised to bring back food to their village. They had been gone a very long time, but their canoe was still empty. So they decided to try out what they had learned. They remembered that whenever the orca approached, all the fish would scatter and hide. They paddled their canoe away from the orca towards a large kelp bed near the rocks. The kelp were as tall as trees and firmly anchored to the bottom. The men cast out their net and waited with great excitement. They knew the fish would hide in the kelp forest away from the dancing, splashing orca. Suddenly, whoosh, the whole net went underwater. When they pulled the net in, it was full of fish. The men paddled home with lessons to share and a boatload of sockeye for everyone. And the whole village gave thanks.